Hello and welcome. Today I want to give you a short introduction how you can simulate um, in the food and beverage industry using plant simulation of Siemens PLM. Um, I want to show you a small example of a chocolate factory. First I want to give you a brief introduction of the process that is simulated and then we will start the simulation and see what's happening. So in, in this chocolate factory you can see here um, the first process we have is a mixer. This mixer is mixing the uh, chocolate mass um, based on the ingredients sugar, milk, powder and cacao. Then going from, from this mixer, the cacao mass is going to the rolling process which takes some time. Then we have a buffer tank and then we have three conching tanks. The conching is a very long process that makes uh, the chocolate uh, like easy melting on your tongue and um, takes up to up to two days depends on on the type of chocolate you are producing so after the chocolate run through the sponging tanks uh, it's going to the mixer here we add some more special ingredients like for example coconut or chili or nuts uh, to make nut chocolate, coconut chocolate and so on and if we go on from this mixing we go to the filling station here we have a break in between continuous and discrete material flow so this filling station is filling chocolate into forms so for example uh, a form has space for eight chocolate bars and then these forms are going to the diverter in the diverter the chocolate bars are kicked out of the form and then they are wrapped, they are pelletized or are packed in cartons then they are pelletized and then they go to our storage. So let's see how this looks like if we simulate it. So here you can see we have some small buffer tanks uh, before the first mixing tank. So it's always filled and then it starts processing and after processing it continues to the rolling process and so on and in the end you can see that already our first uh, chocolates are produced and our first pellets are going into our storage of course you have a have a lot of statistics you can look at so for example you can see the machine utilization or the utilization of the different processes You can watch this all live, so you have, for example, states for emptying and filling and cleaning also, if we define that. Within this uh, tanks you have some uh, specific statistics, for example, the current filling level of this tank. You can see the throughput over time. and you can also see the total throughput so so far we had uh, 2500 liters going in and 2000 liters going out and the rest is still in the tank of course it has a volume of 500 liters as you can see here let's have a look at the statistics of the mixer as the same same statistics And of course, what is what is interesting? Let's see what's what's going on here. Of course, what is interesting, despite the utilization of our processes to define the bottlenecks, so if we look here, we can see. Okay. The tanks, they are always trying to empty, so they are kind of blocked by the ongoing processes. So one, one kind of bottleneck might be our mixer here. Let's see what, what the mixer does. So the mixer is uh, processing, but also quite often tries to get rid of its material, but can't proceed because the following processes are not empty yet. But if we, for example, look at the sponging tanks, then we see 
For example, the one in the middle is 100% utilized and also the two others, they have very small percentage of, of free time. So a good guess would be that they are our, um, our bottleneck. Another bottleneck also might be the mixer behind the punching tanks. So if we, if we look here, we can see, okay, it tries to empty, so it might be that the filling also is not as fast as, as we like it to be. And here's the filling process. And, uh, but it also sometimes waits quite a long time for material. So it waits, uh, the mixer, this mixer here waits for material to come from the sponging tanks. So they are obviously a bottleneck, but they might not be the only bottleneck, but uh, the mixer and this filling station temporarily also might be bottlenecks, but I can't I can't say that that just from this we need to do some more experiments in that. So if you look for example also on our storage um, statistics, let's have a look at, at that. So first, what was our total throughput? We had a uh, 110 pallets of chocolate going going into this storage and 98 going out. And we also had a have the truck order statistic. So we we defined a, a production program or a delivery program up front. So we had some delivery dates, and we tried to realize them. And you can see that sometimes we had a delay. So we were not able to fulfill our customer demands in time. So for example, this uh, order was uh, 32 minutes delayed, while this order was nine and a half hours delayed and this this one al already 15 hours and it's it's getting worse so we, we are not able to fulfill our customer demands with, with this kind of setup we have here let's see what kind of pellets we have in the storage okay we have some some chocolate pellets we have some nut chocolate chili chocolate and coconut chocolates quite a lot of coconut chocolate so 65 pellets of coconut chocolate in there and um, let's see what the filling level was, how it developed. So here you can see the in the storage, here you can see the number of pellets. This is the y-axis and the x-axis is, is the timeline. So over time you can see that um, actually in the beginning we produce a lot and we deliver not, uh, nothing. Uh, but then our content is continuously going going down and if you look at the different sorts of products we are producing so this uh, light blue one is the milk chocolate and you can see that we quite often touched the, the bottom line so we had no pallets of milk chocolate in our storage so uh, we had a, a shortage uh, in, in milk chocolate obviously here and if you look, for example, at the chili chocolate, it, it was not so so uh, so low. So we had most of the time, or, or all the time till now, we had enough chili chocolates uh, to fulfill our customer demands, and also the coconut chocolate looks quite good. But uh, the milk chocolate is, is not what we expect it to be. So uh, you can use the simulation, as, as we can see here, to see if your actual production fits your delivery program or your customer demands and you can use it also for strategic decisions and for uh, operational uh, decisions so you can see okay I, I know what, what I need to pr uh, deliver next month and I need to come up with a production program that fits my customer's demands and I can test it here with this simulation model. That is one, one way you can use the simulation. Another way to use the simulation is to see, okay, how much can I produce overall? So um, what is the maximum throughput of my, of my plant and how can I improve the maximum throughput of my plant? And to, to see that, I prepared uh, four different scenarios. Scenario 1, Scenario 2, Scenario 3, and Scenario 4. And all these scenarios are more or less the same. 
they all have only small adaptions. So the first scenario is the one that we just saw in the demo before. And the second scenario is one that has a fourth conching tank here. So as I said, the conching might be a bottleneck. I just added another conching tank here to see if this will improve my throughput of the system. And since I, I did this experiment before and I realized, okay, the, the outcome was not as much as I expected it to be, I said, okay, obviously only having this additional conching tank will not help me. So I, uh, in the scenario three, I also improved process times at the mixers and also at the filling station to see um, what my outcome will, will be then. And uh, last but not least, um, in the fourth scenario, I added a more intelligent material flow control. So you can see the valve here, that is in between this tank and the four conching tanks. And this valve will decide to which uh, conching mm -hmm. tank the material is going. So by adding a more intelligent material flow control here, uh, I hope I will be able to improve my output of the system. So let's see what's happening. The models are already running. I can see for each scenario, I can see the number of pellets produced per day and what they produced the last hour. And I need to, to let it run for, for some longer time. And here in this graph on the right side, I can see uh, the actual output of all th four models. So model 1 is red, model uh, 2 is green and so on. And I can see how many pellets they produced during the last hour. And here you can see, for example, in the, in the model 4, that it's the output is, is very uh, fluctuative. So sometimes nothing is coming out and, and then a, a lot is coming out. That is because of the batch processes. So we have this conching tanks and they, they fit the 800 liters and they have a long process time. So either they have uh, put out nothing or they put out 800 liters at once. So well that is a, a, common, a common problem in the process industry. So let's see see what's happening. So I can see that um, in my my first scenario, I was a I'm able to produce uh, 72 pellets per day on average. I already simulated two and a half. Oh, I had the statistics reset. Sorry. So um, I produced uh, 300 uh, around 350 pellets per day. While in the scenario with adding just another conching tank, but not changing my material flow control, I had a, a reduction in my in my throughput. That is quite quite interesting, actually. So, um, just by adding a conching tank and not caring about the material flow logic, I actually made it worse. So let's see um, if I just improve my process times also of the of the mixers and the filling station I'm able to to get a higher output so from I write I raise my output from 350 pellets per day which is the current situation to 420 pellets per day but if you look at the scenario 4 where I added a more intelligent material flow control without adding further equipment or investing into into more hardware I was able to um, improve my output from scenario 3 to scenario 4 by around 80 pellets per day, which is significantly higher. So if you look, for example, at scenario 1 and scenario 4, you can see, okay, by adding another conching tank, improving the process times at the filling stations and mixers, and adding a more intelligent material flow control, I can kind of I can come up with a production of around 500 pellets per day. So, thanks for your attention. That was just a short introduction uh, of what you can do with the uh, plant simulation food and beverage library. And thanks again.